Hello friends, this video on Kinetic Theory Part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from Part 1 to Part 19 before going ahead with Part 20. The Translational Degree of Freedom What do you mean by translation? Translation is the motion of a body as a whole from one point to another. It is basically the movement of a body as a whole. Now here, till now I explained you degrees of freedom in terms of that ball example. Now I will talk you in terms of molecules. When I talk of any object, it is made up of molecules. Molecules in turn is made up of atoms. When I say that let us suppose the two atoms, let us suppose I consider the oxygen molecule. It has two oxygen atoms which are bonded together, right? Now when this entire thing that is two oxygen atoms along with that bond, that is the body as a whole, that is called the body as a whole. When that body as a whole is moving from one point to another, that is called translation. It is not that one part of the body is moving, that is one atom is moving and the other atom is rest. It is not like that. Both the atoms as a whole is moving from one point to another. That is called translation. So the ball example which I mentioned in the first slide was basically it, it talked about translation because there also the ball was moving from one point to another as a whole. Right? So in this case a molecule which is free to move in space will need three coordinates to specify its location. So here also let us suppose if there is a molecule which is free to move in space. So such a molecule will need three coordinates to specify its location that is a coordinate along x axis, one coordinate along y axis and one along z axis. Therefore it has three degrees of freedom. Similarly a substance which is free to move in a plane that is two dimensional that will need two coordinates to specify its location. So it has two degrees of freedom. Similarly, a molecule which is free to move along a line will need one coordinate to specify its location and therefore it has one degree of freedom. Molecules of a monoatomic gas have only translational degrees of freedom. That means for monoatomic gas, that is gases which has only one atom. For example, oxygen molecule that is O2 that is diatomic because it consists of two oxygen atoms. Whereas if you think of helium, it consists of only one helium atom. So for any monoatomic gas, we can have only translational degree. That is, they can only move from one point to another. They cannot rotate because there is no other molecule with respect to which it can rotate. Right? It, there is only one atom. So it cannot rotate, neither it can vibrate. So monoatomic gas will have only translational degrees of freedom. Each translational degree of freedom contributes a term that contains square of some variable of motion. To what will it contribute? Each translational degree of freedom will contribute something to the energy, right? Because when the object is moving from one point to another, it is contributing something to energy, correct? Now, each translational degree of freedom will contribute a term that contains square of some variable of motion. So, what is, what do you mean by variable of motion? Variable of motion means a variable which determines motion. What is that here? In this case, it will be velocity. It can either be Vx, it can either be Vy or it can be Vz. These are the velocities along x, y, z axis. So, when I talk of motion along a line, we will talk only about Vx. When we talk it in a plane, we will talk about two of them, that is Vx, Vy. Similarly, in space, we will talk about three of them. So, each degree of freedom will contribute one term that has square of this variable of motion. So, it will contribute a term of this form, that is half m Vx square. So, this is the term which it will contribute to the energy. What is this? This is nothing but kinetic energy. 
which is involved with the motion of the molecule or the object from one part to another. In thermal equilibrium, the average of each such term is half kVT. From kinetic theory, we know that the average of each of these terms, when we consider their average, so that will be equal to half kVT. So when it is in three dimension, this will be equal to 3 into half kVT because for each term it is half kVT. That is for three terms it will be 3 by 2 kVT. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.